All right, welcome to the Sacrum Coccyx and SI Joint PowerPoint. I'll try not to just read off of the slides and add a little bit more information on this particular exam. Um, this isn't an exam you're going to do a ton of simply because there aren't too many problems with the sacrum and coccyx unless the patient happens to fall down or someone pulls a chair out from behind them and they fall right on their um, butt. Um, otherwise, it's probably an exam that you're not going to see too often, but obviously you will have to know how to do it when it comes up. So this is going to be the second primal primary curve. It's going to be the last curve at the very bottom. It has the same lordotic curve as the thoracic spine. There are basically five bones that are fused into one uh, when you become an adult. You know, kids, you can see these separations pretty well. It's kind of shovel-shaped or shaped like an arrowhead if you really look at it. Apex points um, above and anteriorly on that. Um, there's going to be these four sets of sacral foramina that go all the way through. They're going to be paired going on through uh, from the front to the back. Um, sacral horns posterior and just superior to the coccyx horns. So you have these little horns at the bottom here where the actual top of the coccyx connects into. Um, this just shows more of the anatomy on there. Sacral hiatus is going to be number six here. It's going to be this kind of little, um, I'd say, depression at the very bottom of the sacrum on here. Um, you have a median sacral crest. Um, the other PowerPoint goes over the anatomy pretty well, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it here. Um, sacral horns above here that you can see, those are what's going to articulate with L5, the inferior processes of L5. Um, sacral crest, again, right along the middle here that you can see going right down the center. Um, pedicles, lateral to the foramina. So if you look at it here, you can see that the pedicles are going to be here, on these edges here, on the pars lateralis, the very bottom, um, lamina towards the outside. The coccyx anatomy, um, usually you've got three to five parts of the coccyx. Normally you can't see five. It's going to be closer to four in most cases. You can make out this part pretty well, though, the most superior part of it, especially with this little transverse process coming off the edge that shares common anatomy with every other part of the spine um, or vertebra going up. Cornu, those are going to be the little connections. They're going to be right at the top. That's what's going to connect into the sacrum at the inferior portion of it. Any portions of these can break off, but typically these two will be pretty much fused together. These two will be pretty closely associated with, so a lot of times if you do break something, you'll either break it off here, or you'll break it off at the very top, right where it connects into the sacrum. SI joints, um, you have two sacroiliac joints that's just going to connect from the sacrum to the ilium, thus SI joints. Um, you have one on the right and one on the left. Um, sits at an angle which requires oblique views, so these do not sit straight on in the body. So as you look at the skeleton in class, notice that it does sit at a little bit of an angle. So when you oblique the patient, you're actually putting the SI joints in more of an AP position. Um, there are some ligaments that are going across that as well because it is movable, but you do have ligaments kind of connecting this across. So in extreme examples of trauma, that can actually separate the pelvis a little bit, and you can find that the sacrum will separate from the ilium. Dressing instructions, we'll see, we're going to have to read pants off. Underwear is usually fine, no snaps, clips, ringlets on the underwear, so um, make sure there's no designs on there. Plastic rings um, on thongs usually will show up, some gems if it's embroidery and for some reason if they don't remember their name and they need embroidery. They can figure that out and you can see that and that will definitely have to come off. Uh, shirts with buttons can't hang down over the sacral area, so they can just pull that above the iliac crest a lot of times. Should shield males because the testes are below the level of the symphysis pubis. Females, same as the lumbar spine, unfortunately can't shield over this area, especially the AP because um, it is the area of interest right over there. Uh, shield both on laterals, however, with another shield along the posterior surface. Posterior surface shield, just really to pick off some of that uh, scatter from reaching your IR. We have some basic positions, the sacrum, AP and lateral, coccyx, AP and lateral, SI joints, you basically have an AP, axial view kind of, and the obliques. A lot of times the sacrum and coccyx lateral can be done together. So this just shows an AP sacrum. 
looking at it, it's about 40 inches we are going to use the table bucking we're going to angle this up about 15 degrees towards the head so all you need to do is just center put your center ray two inches superior to the synthesis pubis so there's a variety of ways text will tell you this including using the asis really if you just frame this image the best you can usually you'll do pretty well and the synthesis does have to be on there however because this will hang below the level of the synthesis when we angle it like that we're not so much interested in seeing the coccyx, but more or less kind of stretching out the sacrum a little bit because of how it's angled, and being able to see the foramen going all the way through. Marker should be low and towards the outside because this is kind of tapered in as it gets a little bit more inferiorly. About 73 at 32 is a pretty good starting technique. AP coccyx, all this is not a very great image here. It's also going to be at 40 inches. We are going to center. Uh, let's put the central ray 10 degrees going caudad, so it's going to go in the opposite direction. It's just because of the way the sacrum and coccyx kind of are opposed to each other in terms of their anatomy. You're going to put your central ray about two inches superior to the symphysis pubis, so it should sit right in the middle of this kind of bladder or area or true pelvis area that you can see here. A lot of times we do like to get the entire sacrum on there as well just to get kind of a bonus look at it. Uh, you can use close collimation. Some people type, will tighten up the collimation pretty well. Others leave it open a little bit more like a bladder shot. Uh, it's just this needs to be done on suspended respiration. And again, just make sure your marker is a little low on the outside. Because the coccyx is a much thinner bone, you can decrease a little bit of the KV just to adjust for that. Lateral, usually you need about a 5 by 10 cone field size. You need a little bit of width here just because it does curve around here. 10 inches, it's not as much as you need top to bottom. You should be able to get the entire thing on there. The uh, uh, orientation will be in the table bucky. We are going to use a straight angle uh, CR posterior to the ASIS, about 3 to 4 inches. So the ASIS is about here. So you're going to end up about centering like right in this area, which will get this half going back, this half going forward. Uh, shield posterior, again, just to help clean that up. We don't want to make this too dark so that the coccyx won't show up on there. Marker, anterior along the mid-sacrum or along the posterior surface of the sacrum superior. So where that means is that you want to take advantage of the curve and typically put it right in the middle here. If you put it too far back, then you run the risk of either getting it in the last spinous process of L5 or maybe it being too far out and it gets kind of darkened out on that. Make sure that it is lateral, same as the lumbar spine. Make sure the sciatic notches are on top of each other. Typically this space will be kind of lipped over like it is here. You can actually see the bottom of L5 on here. Sacrum you really can't see too well with the lipping on there, so that looks pretty straight going all the way across. About 80 at 63, so think about your lateral lumbar techniques and usually it's just a little bit lower. SI joints, the AP, this is going to be kind of an axial view because we are going to throw about a 30 to 35 degree cephalic angle on it. So you have to think about if you're doing male versus female because that will change the degrees of the um, angulation. Central ray, about an inch and a half above the symphysis pubis. Because of this, how severely it's angled, we are looking at this area right through here. So the SI joint shouldn't extend below the symphysis of the pubis, but a lot of times you end up getting it on there just to make sure that you can see these edges going all the way across. This is not a well collimated SI joint view as this should be brought in side to side to the SI joints. You really don't need anything above L5 on there as well. Uh, include both of these on one image. Uh, suspend respiration, marker, lateral, and either superior or inferior. You don't want to put it in the middle because if we have a tight columning field here, the middle is typically the widest point. So you want to put it up high or down low uh, based on that anatomy. This is also called the Ferguson method. The obliques. 40 inches. Um, you are going to use about a 3x5 coned area on this. Now with the obliques, a lot of techs leave this open way too much. You really just need to see the SI joint itself. You don't need to see the opposite side because it's going to be closed off. So just remember to work on that collimation. Uh, you're going to use a perpendicular angle, so no tube angle on this. However, we are going to angle our patient about 25 to 30 degrees and we are going to look for the upside SI joint. So if you're doing an LPO, the area of interest is going to be the right side that you see here. Use a sponge to hold the position. Just make sure that's under the hip. Center, 
one inch medial to the upside ASIS. It's very simple to find the ASIS and then just center one inch over from it. If you do that, you should be right in the middle of it every time and your three by five field size should work. If you're trying to remember this with the obliques of the lumbar spine, we're gonna center over two inches to be over the lumbar spine, but that will be at a 45 degree patient oblique instead of this 25 to 30 degree angle. So it makes a little more sense. You're gonna single, not single, but center a little further over for your lumbar spine than your SI joints. Uh, don't over rotate. Make sure that this joint space stays open as much as possible to suspend your respiration. And again, marker lateral a little bit low should be fine. About 80 at 40 is typically what you're going to use to um, get your SI joints on both sides. So it shows a little bit of pathology. You can see a little bit of the breaks there indicated by the arrows. Usually this is trauma related, usually a fall or direct hit to the back portion of the body. Dislocated coccyx, this is usually from falling on the tailbone. So normally this is going to follow a nice lordotic curve going down and the coccyx will also fall. But occasionally when you fall and you push this forward, now you've got a problem because there are nerves that go across there. So it's going to cause quite a bit of pain. Um, usually the only way to rectify this is to give it time. There's two options really. You can just give it time. The nerves will kind of reestablish themselves kind of being stretched out and the muscles kind of pull back a little bit it might take a little while it might have a little donut you have to carry around the other thing they can do is that they can go in through the rectum put a finger right through here and actually pull the coccyx into place um, most people do not go for that simply because of getting a finger put in your butt and kind of pulled out it's going to cause quite a bit of pain so it really depends if you want more pain now or if you want more pain kind of dragged out for the duration of how long it takes to get better. Pathology of the SI joints. We have a fracture through the left SI joint. So you can see not separated. This one quite a bit of separation here. It's going to be a corresponding fracture going across to the right ischium because what happens is that this is all kind of connected through. So if you have pressure on one side, it's almost like a counterbalance on the opposite side. And a lot of times we get fractures on something else. Um, car motorcycle accidents very common surgical reattachments with plates and screws very common for this they can actually anchor this part down with a plate and some screws this part they can put over the flat ilium and through there to kind of reattach that this just shows a bit of those um, prosthetic devices i talked about these are some inlet outlet views kind of showing them uh, when you lengthen out the pelvis how it actually looks the screws aren't actually as long as they appear it's just because you're looking at them in a different orientation. But we will get into the inlet and outlet views of the pelvis coming up uh, in the second part of the semester. Uh, let's see. So it just shows a little bit of the ligaments and the disruption that can go along with that. So you have partial ruptures here. That's going to affect the symphysis pubis because it's going to put some pressure on that. Complete tears here. I think tends to slide over a little bit. And obviously if you have no connection between the SI joint and the symphysis pubis has enough pressure on it, it's going to cause quite a bit of pain. Only advice I can give you, just try to, if you are going to fall, fall off to the side. Maybe not stick your wrist down like this because this looks like a scaphoid fracture kind of waiting to happen. Um, but if you could spread it out throughout the leg and maybe one cheek, maybe you can avoid the uh, tailbone fractures that you actually see quite a bit in these um, ice skating accidents. That's going to conclude our PowerPoint today. It's pretty simple um, in terms of number of positions. We're only going to do uh, two positions of the sacrum, two of the coccyx. One of those is the same as the sacrum. And then three, three views, basically an RPO, an LPO, and an AP axial of the SI joints. We'll be going over these in the laboratory class, so if you have any questions, um, feel free to ask them during that time.